This is our second installment. Uh, this week, John Scott, I'm pumped. You know why? Same. Because we're going through Troy football. We're going to go through our preview. First up, we're going to start with uh, Troy last year. We're going to look back how we looked last year. Yep. Then we're going to move into our new coaches, uh, who we have now, kind of where they're from, uh, what kind of philosophy they might have. Then we're going to move into our departures, where, we, where we're seeing all of our transfers go. Uh, into what is now going to be our offense and defense for the 2019 football season, which honestly, I know there's some murmurs uh, in the Trojan Nation about how we're going to look a little different. Yep. Might be and might lose a step or two. I'm I'm fairly confident. I am too. Uh, so we're we're going to get into that later. Uh, but then finally, we're going to wrap up with our rankings for the Sun Belt. We're going to go through our schedule, uh, put put those W's by uh, all those Troy games, and move into. Uh, to where we think Troy's going to end up at the end of this year. So, a lot of great information. John Scott, I think you pulled up uh, a good amount of, of golden nuggets in there this week. So, we've got a lot of great things to go to. And without further ado, let's get started. So, yep. Troy last year, John Scott, we've got uh, a different athletic director. Mm-hmm. Neil Brown's our head coach. Vic Koning's our defensive coordinator. Uh, we've got uh, some other key components there kind of walk me through what we saw last year so last year we were a very very good team a lot of people are worried because of the things we're losing this year um but last year we played a lot of players we had a lot of guys sub in and out so there's actually more guys with experience on our roster than you think and troy's recruited very very well as well i think to speak to that uh with that rotation Correct. what what a lot of people don't realize is we had a lot of injuries too Mm-hmm. A lot of injuries with the first and second string, which allowed that rotation to be even more than maybe what it normally would have. Yep. So we, we've got a lot of depth, I would say, this upcoming year because of that. But, but keep, uh, keep going on to your point. And uh, last year, we went 9-3, and 10-3 and three in the bowl game. Still a great year, but I think a lot of Troy fans think that we could have done better, which is very true. Uh, losing Caleb Barker early in the season to an ACL tear um, – Really set the offense back. We were a 40-point uh, per-game team. And then after we went, we kind of saw the offense kind of regress a little bit. And that happened halfway through the Georgia State game. Right. Georgia State, uh, halftime, Caleb Borker doesn't come back. Sawyer Smith takes over and uh, is the key uh, quarterback, is the key component to our offense for the rest of that season there, um, running the taking the shots uh, from the quarterback position. So very different from what it could have been if Caleb Borker was still the – Still the sole guy, the quarterback right. that he kind of became. Yeah. We were we were a much better team last year than even the nine and three. But what we had, Boise State, we weren't ready to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if we played Boise State later in the year, it could have been a much different game. We lost Liberty right after we lost our quarterback, mm-hmm. and then of course App State, we had a lot of injuries on the back end. So we really could have had a lot better year last year, and it makes me look forward to this year as well. Um, unfortunately, this year we have lost a ton of players on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, specifically in transfers on the defense and our receivers to graduation. Mm. Well, uh, to speak to that, you know, we got Damian Willis in the in the league right now. Actually just caught his first uh, touchdown pass this past uh, – Yeah, that was uh, awesome. That was awesome. It's yeah. all over Twitter. Check that out. It was against a very good cornerback too, a top five corner in the league. Uh, Damian had a great catch over his shoulder. Uh, had a had a nice little chopper style uh, celebration <laughs> yeah. too. Saw a lot of those at Troy. Yeah, it might be a little uh, jab still at LSU from two years ago. We should, no re- you remember that game? Yep. We were there. Who could forget that? Who could forget that game? But anyways, let's move into uh, kind of now our new coaches. So we kind of talked about Troy last year, nine and three, ten and three team after the bowl game. Kind of kind of dominated Buffalo. Still injured. We were, yep. we were still injured, but. Yeah, handled Buffalo. That game was a lot closer than what score wise than what it actually was. what it, I will completely agree to that. That quarterback was very overrated for that Buffalo team, but don't don't let me go down that rabbit trail. <laughs> uh, and so we talked about that. It's still a great team. This new year, this transition year, we've got Chip Lindsay at the helm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be our our new head coach. Uh, you know, he's come in. He had a fantastic recruiting class that he was kind of gifted with from Neil Brown. Of course. But then, but then he's put in still work. He's gotten a lot more transfers as well to come in uh, to kind of complete his own system. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like Neil Brown's. Yeah, so we're going to see a very similar system to what we saw in the past. A lot of new faces, but a lot of things are going to look very similar. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk basically, oh, he's come from Auburn, what Auburn's offense looked like last year. Um, but what people don't realize is, they had a huge issue with Gus Malzahn and him calling plays. There was back and forth. So that wasn't really the true offensive coordinator 
that you're going to see from him when he comes to Troy and what they're going to install at Troy. Um, just a little background on Chip Lindsey. He actually started uh, coaching right here, high school football. Um, from Birmingham, Alabama. Right. He uh, was offense coordinator for Hoover. Most people know Hoover from the state of Alabama. Hoover then, U. Yep. And then also the head coach of Spain Park as well. Um, he served a stint as the quarterback coach at Troy before going to Arizona State to be the offensive coordinator. And then more importantly, going to Southern Miss, who we play this year. Right. Um, but Week he kinda, three. Yeah. He, uh, he kind of made their offense. Nick Mullins, a lot of y'all know he's in the NFL. Played great the other night, actually, um, for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, he's, the t- he's the number two behind Garoppolo. Yep. And Garoppolo is still battling an injury. Yeah. So, Nick, I mean... Garoppolo has not looked good, so a lot of people are talking about Mullins. Mullins. So he basically, that was his guy at Southern Miss before going to Auburn. So he's got great offenses in the past. I think he's going to do great things at Troy. And then he had a short little stint at Kansas there, like a three-month stint. (laughs) Maybe Uh, even shorter than that. I don't probably, you know, moved into his office, moved right out, and we we got him at Troy. Uh, You know, I'm I'm excited. I, I think I think the chip ship has set sail. You know, it's still it's you can still see the bay though. I mean, it's it's fresh. It's out there. But I'm, I'm excited. I think he's got fantastic athletes. I think his system will fit the Sun Belt very well. Yep. I think it'll continue to shred defense as the Troy offense has when it has had those key players. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited about that. Now, Ryan Q um, is also another Auburn guy. He's our new offensive line coach. Won a national championship with Auburn. Won a national championship with, all, uh, with Auburn. Now, uh, can you, do you know a little bit about our defensive coordinator? Brandon Hall is going to be our new defensive coordinator. He was linebacker's coach previously under Neil Brown staff, who's being promoted. So we're mm-hmm. going to see much of the same um, from the Troy defense, just a, just a new face to see on the defense. And hopefully it looks exactly the same as it did yeah. last year. Yeah. We had a great defense. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's going to implement that same kind of system that we ran. Um, players know who he is, uh, know his philosophy. So I think that that's a good hire right there as well. I got a new slot wide receivers coach, Coach Carr. Uh, he's going to be coaching up our, our slot guys. He's from ULM, actually, uh, who is known to have a very athletic, um, gifted wide receivers that know how to run those crossing routes across the middle. So that's great to have a, a coach that is from that system, which is kind of what we run here at Troy. Yep. So that's that's very encouraging. Uh, and then we've also got a new weight training coach this year because our, our previous one went with Coach Brown. Uh, so uh, hopefully our, our players are still – Getting, getting beefed go. up, ready yeah. to go. Uh, you ready for the those Saturdays in the vet? Now, um, I think that's all of our new coaches. So, you, are you ready to talk about something that it might be a little heartbreaking? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I know we started off a little upbeat. We kind of get a little sad at this point. We're gonna talk about our transfers. I mean, it's it's no secret we lost some great weapons this year. Some yeah. some guys that um, are easily game changers. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I mean, of course, you want to start with Marcus Jones. Yeah, great, great player. Um, he's a great corner for us, all-American corner, but people also don't realize he was also a kick returner. That great kick return against Nebraska last year for the touchdown. Um, huge, huge. That's huge that we're going to lose. A little, little other tidbit, he, has, he shares the NCAA record for most kick returns for touchdowns. Really? In the game. That wow. happened against Coastal Carolina, I believe, yeah. two years ago. But um, that yeah, that's a great player leaving mm-hmm. Houston, which is unfortunate. The transfer portals really kind of hit us this year, and a lot of the smaller schools are some of these great players. Um, but we've also lost Tron Folsom. He's transferred to Colorado State. He was our leading tackler in not only 2017 but also 2018. Yeah. So that's a real, real big loss at linebacker. And then uh, Tyler Murray. Another linebacker yep. transfer. Um, uh, transferred out. Not sure where he's at. It's at, it's at a, it's a smaller school in North Carolina. Gotcha. It's a C- CUSA school, I do believe. I, okay. I can't can't remember the name off the top of my head. But still another big defensive Big loss. Good player. Loss. Um, and then not the transfer, we lose Damian Willis, our top receiver, who, who we, we mentioned earlier. We mentioned earlier, yeah. just caught a touchdown pass in the NFL. Um, DeAndre Douglas and also Sidney Davis, which was our top three receivers from last year. Last year, they combined for 147 receptions for 1,700 yards and 20 touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of production. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of production. And then we also lost, uh, back to defense, we lost a key component at the D-tackle and linebacker because of graduation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the D-tackle, Trayvon Sanders, uh, big, big guy. Yep. Filled up a lot of space there in between uh, the guards and tackles. So that, I mean, it's always hard to replace a a next level caliber player. Of course, yeah. 
And then lastly, we lost, you know, the graduation Blaze Brown, who most of y'all remember him. The interception against LSU, mm -hmm. the seal of the game, was a big play for him, and yeah. Sidarius Rooker as well on the back end. So a lot of big names gone. But and Hunter, Hunter Reese. Right. Oh, I forgot about him. Hunter, Hunter Reese. Reese. Yeah, how could you forget? Yeah, he's but, just uh, everywhere on the field. Yeah. Everywhere. So uh, we mentioned a lot of guys on defense. Right. A lot of guys on defense. And I think that's kind of why there was some shakiness this offseason with Troy football yep. uh, from the Troy faithful. I would say I'm a Troy faithful. I think you're a Troy faithful. Oh, yeah, I sure. mean, bleed Cardinal yep. for sure. But, um, you know, after some of this research, John Scott, I'm not as upset yep. as I was. Um, originally, when I, when I started looking, I was like, oh, man, this could be a real bad year for Troy. New coach, losing a ton of players on defense. Right. We're losing our best receivers. I was like, oh, man, this might be the year that Troy kind of – Our know, quarterback's like, coming back from a knee injury, which yeah. he, which knees are just so – oh Yeah, at first I was like, wow, we could be looking for a bad year. And I, I, When I actually looked at it, though, one thing I didn't realize is Troy's returning a lot of total production, which doesn't mean the players that are coming back necessarily, but like mm. the players who contributed last year. So now, John Scott, on All But Confirmed, let's get into our offense. Our offensive production, you just talked about production. Let's get into our key components on offense. And, and a lot of people would start with Caleb Barker right here. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to. Yeah, We're going to talk about B.J. Smith. Because B.J. Smith is a key component to our offense. Troy football, when we start with the run, when we're running between the tackles, when B.J. Smith has that ball and is bouncing 50-yard you know, gains, which would be great if that was every play. I mean, yeah. Right, right. But when 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 we are run dominant between our very experienced offensive line, mm -hmm. we win football games. Correct. Talk, um, talk talk a little bit more about BJ Smith. I mean, at first I was going to say Caleb Barker, obviously the quarterback coming back, the numbers he put up, but being, after, the, being the number one component. After talking to you, I, I think I agree. I think our running back BJ is going to set up the quarterback, set up the passing game, set up all different parts of our offense. He's eleven hundred yard rush from a year ago. I think he'll increase on that number this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and with the offensive line we have returning, four out of five uh, starters back, and three of those have started for two years or more, it's going to be run-centric. It's going to be run-first, and that's how Troy's looked the past couple years as well. And when, when we've won football games, we've won because of our run game. Correct. Yeah. And we've got Billingsley in the backfield, too, mm -hmm. who has to be gang-tackled, does not go down to one one defensive player. Uh, he's uh, just a complete animal in the backfield. Going, he is going to the end zone every single every single time he gets the ball. Yeah, and then we got Fry back there too, which Fry's a little bit different. Tell us a little bit more about Fry. Yeah. So Fry's more of your scat back. He's going to be a little quicker back. If you want to go see him play, look at does a big play against Clemson where he took the ball for on the fourth down for the sixty yard touchdown. That was on like the wide receiver reverse. Almost. Yep. Yeah. Um, very very fast back. You're going to see him all across the field, different formations. Not always at running back, um, but it's a nice little compliment to BJ Smith, a little quick back out of the back. Yeah. BJ Smith, more of your down, down the nose, can be a, a, a screen running back. Billingsley, he's down the down the middle every single play. Yep. So we've got three different components there in our running back game, which all complement each other very well. Mm -hmm. Keeps fresh legs in there. And with so, offensive line. Well, the, wait, yeah, we're there. about to get into that. And I think that's our, our hidden gem on our offense. Of course. Uh, but let's talk about Caleb Barker. Came back from knee surgery. Uh, supposed to be stronger than ever. I'm – I – I'm clinging to that. Yep. I'm clinging to that because um, with him in the game, that that elevates our run game even further. It allows us uh, the deep ball. Uh, it allows us to run our screens, our across the middle passes. I think Gunnar Watson uh, is also another very athletic quarterback. However, Caleb Barker has the experience, has shown us what he can do. Um, he was getting on the Heisman watch list um, starting week four, right yep. before that horrible injury. So we've got a very, very good athletic quarterback that can run the type of offense that we have. It's just keeping him healthy. And, John Scott, what is the secret to putting this running back and this quarterback together? Well, the big thing is last year was a fluke injury. Mm -hmm. Usually you'd say it's, you need an offensive line to protect a quarterback that's getting hit, but he wasn't a quarterback that got hit mm -hmm. a lot. He's, he, it's a fluke injury. I don't think it would happen again, but you never know. Yeah. Um, but Caleb Barker. Uh, this year, if he can put up the numbers that he put up for the first four games last year, we're going to have a very, very good offense. I don't think we score less than 40 points a game. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be – if he went last year throwing 83%, completing 83% of his passes for uh, 552 yards, no interceptions, not a 201 quarterback rating. If he can do that again, yeah. we will be electric. And and he, he – there's no pocket when he gets the ball. 
Yeah. He can throw from any sideline to sideline. He's not afraid to take a hit. He'll run down the field. He'll lower his shoulder into the linebacker, which, you know, me, this year, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Slide. Slide, <laughs> slide, get out of bounds. We don't we don't need those extra two yards. I love it. Yeah. I love it because he's fighting for every single yard, but at the same time, you know. He's, he's perfect for this offense. Yeah, absolutely. He really he's got all the skill sets for it. And that's just, you know, keeping that keeping that body healthy. Um, and if that stays healthy, I don't I don't see Troy losing a game because of lack of offense. Correct. At all. Which moves to our offensive line, which John Scott, this offensive line is incredible. Yep. We've got Gaston, we've got Bradshaw, we've got Bradshaw who is the new face almost of this offensive line. Bradshaw is the is the one non everyday starter from last year. He's coming right. and he's gonna be the be the center this year. Uh, but he was a six man, so one guy goes down, Bradshaw was going in that game. Um, so still a lot of experience. You got Kirk Kelly, uh, big athletic, great uh, offense lineman. I uh, talked about Gaston for a second. He um, has, has been starting for two years. He is, is going to be his third year starting. A complete animal uh, in there. He is just, no one gets by him. Big guy from Troy. Uh, can, and is a great player overall. And then Crowder's in our offense line too. A lot of experience. And not just the Sunbelt games. Yeah. Um, two big games that most people know, Troy fans, Nebraska, LSU. Most of our offensive linemen, four of them, have played in those games. So they understand not just to play Sunbelt games. But not played not just played, well. but... Played well. Played well and yeah. started some of yep. them. So th- we've got the experience. We have the experience on the offensive line, which... With our offense, you know, some people think, oh, we, we're, a, we're a running gun team. We're just going to throw the screens and the crossing routes and the and the streaks down the field. But we talked about earlier, our offense is really set up on that run game and establishing between the tackles. We've got the offensive line to establish that. And we're going to talk about the receivers in a second. And if we can run the football mm-hmm. and force them to crowd the box with the receivers we have coming in off the Well, hey, let's, let's talk about it. Like, let's I, get into I, it. Let's, let's talk about it. So, our wide receivers, we, we've lost some. We talked about mm-hmm. that earlier. We lost three big wide receivers. Yeah. Uh, that DeAndre Douglas, incredible, plagued with injuries last year, outstanding wide receiver. Damian Willis catching touchdowns in the NFL right now. Another another one uh, due to graduation. I, I'm His name's uh, losing me right now. But who we're bringing back? One of my favorite wide receivers to watch, Luke Whittemore. Whit! In class with that dude. Funny guy, great wide receiver, great possession wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, can go down the field and, and come down and will come down with that ball. Who else we got that, at the wide receiver position? Yeah, Trey Eifert's coming back. If you watch on the bowl game, I think he had over 100 yards receiving. It's incredible in the bowl game. Great, great player. Um, and a lot of people might be able to say our receiving core of the top three last year might be the the best receiving core we've had. But this year could be stronger. A uh, talent wise, could be a lot stronger than what it was last year. Let's let's go ahead and talk about this guy, Reggie Todd. Freak. 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 Six five. Yeah. T- over 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, athletic wide receiver, transfer from a community college, started at Mississippi State, played there played there as a true freshman. Yeah, he actually uh, started five games and played in 13 games. Had, had about 30 so receptions around there, a good amount of uh, yards as well with those receptions. Uh, ended up transferring, and we're I'm, I'm thrilled to have him. Yeah. Talked to, t- talk to some guys, say he's an outstanding teammate. Uh, so that's encouraging as well. You you always worry about that with transfers. Yeah, you, if they're going to fit, he seems to love Troy. So I'm really excited to see what he brings, just athletically. Six five, six on five end. on the end. It gets, just throw it up to him. Throw it up to him. What what corners in the sub? Throw it up. Five five ten five eleven six five receiver out there. It's going to be great. But luckily, that's not the only six five receiver we have on our roster. <laughs> We got another one? Yeah, Khalil McLean, 6'4", 225 junior from Hutchinson Community College. Dang, young. So we have two receivers sitting around 6'5 that are coming in that have a lot of talent. What a red zone threat. So not only do we have B.J. Smith in the backfield that can run over people, yep. can catch the ball. We've got two 6'5 wide receivers. We've got a dual threat quarterback that can run, throw, toss the ball behind his back, do whatever he's got to do yep. to get in the end zone. You know, as long we've got the offensive line that's going to be blocking 
yeah. very well for all these. I don't see us. I don't see Tyler Sumter seeing the field much this year. No, just just the pan and pitcher. Let's say we're in the red zone. You have Fry coming in motion, the speed back. Yeah. You have B.J. Smith behind uh, the quarterback. Great offensive line and two six wide receivers on the edge. What what's the defense going to do? I mean, I mean yeah, like, are you going to you going to double cover the wide receivers uh, to prevent the jump ball? Or are you going to go with the motion with Fry because Fry, if he gets around the corner, I mean, he's gone. Right. Uh, or are you going to have to load the box to prevent B.J. from just Going down your throat with when we have uh, uh, our tight end set and our, our fullback set in the game because we we have those power sets as well. So we have a deadly offense this year. Yeah, the woes of the offense from last year is not going to happen. We're going to have a great offense. We need to stay healthy. A very good offense, but we yes, need we need to stay healthy. If we stay healthy, and if because we didn't last year, but fingers crossed, it is all but confirmed. We average thirty five points easy a game. Of course. And, Especially with our schedule. And then what people, what, another component, offensive component, Tyler Sumter, fantastic field goal kicker. Yep. Fantastic field goal kicker. Um, I don't. My breath doesn't stop anywhere within 40 yards. If it's within 40 yards, completely confident. Which is a lot better than the LSU game when we, we were both at that game. <laughs> Doink. Oh, man. <laughs> Luckily, it went, in. it went in. It went in. We we found our, our niche with our kicking. So uh, I think offensively, we're going to have an ex- amazing year. I agree. Totally agree. So now we talk about offense, super high on the offense. Moving into what people are a little shaky about. Yep, for sure. With, with good reason, because we talked about it earlier, our departures, our transfers. Um New management, even though that they're from Troy, it's still different. New. It's different. Yeah. John Scott, what are we going to expect from our defense this year? Well, last year, our defense was great running at run defense, mm-hmm. and that is something that we're going to see again. We're t- turning a lot of great uh, D linemen. For example, Jarvis Hayes is coming back, and Anthony Baker is coming back. They combined for 20 tackles for loss last year and nine sacks. That's yeah. coming back on the D-line, so run defense is going to be great. And then also at linebacker, Carlton Marshall, freshman, All-American linebacker, the quarterback of our defense is back to lead mm-hmm. the defense. So at the core of the D-line and linebacker, yeah. we're going to be good. I think we're going to be very, very good uh, in, the, in that core spot because Carlton, yeah, outstanding run stop. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yep. Um, little undersized, little little on the short end. However, yep. he, play, he plays like a giant. So, I mean, he can't be – can't be too upset about that. Now, um, some would say we had the huge names on our corners last year. We had Marcus Jones on one of them, Terrence Dunlap on the other one. We're not seeing that this year. Yep. What What are we going to lose in the passing game for our defense? Well, first off, it's important to note that our defense was not only run by our D-line last year, but that really helped our secondary out. And even though we had the big names in the secondary – our weakness last year was still our secondary. We yeah. gave a lot of yards. That, I mean, k- case in point, the Boise State game. Great, great team. Had a great quarterback. Got completely torched. shredded, torched. torched on the outside. Yeah. So I mean, it, they couldn't run the ball, mm-hmm. but they were just obliterating us in the passing game. Yep. So I, from what I'm taking at John Scott, if we can get to the quarterback, still, mm-hmm. we've got it. We've got a chance. We got it. a chance, and, and we got a lot of young talent that yeah. can prove themselves. Joe Bridges is coming back after academic ineligibility. He's going to be an outside linebacker. That's going to be a key component. Uh, John Scott, don't we have a really good safety coming back this year? Yeah, we have good safety. Um, one player I want to look at is Will Sunderland. He's a corner. He transfers a four-star from Oklahoma. He's yet to really do anything yet. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does on the field for his time to shine. Uh, Kobe Perry, which is a transfer uh, at safety, uh, junior college transfer. And then also – Reddy Stewart, you can really see he's a freshman three-star, so you might be able to see him on the field as well. Okay, now we said we, we still have a lot of question marks uh, around our defense just because um, they're kind of keeping it tight. Troy's not yeah. not not speaking too much about uh, what we're going to see on defense. I think there's might have been a couple injuries this year um, for, for camp, as there always is. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we'll really understand and know Who's playing in these positions? We have an idea. I mean, Carlton Marshall is going to be our middle linebacker. Zoe Bridges is going to be on the outside. Uh, it's just putting that together with the final pieces. And we're entering kind of new territory, Troy. 
we're recruiting really, really well. Very well. Last Very well. last year's probably the best recruiting class Troy's ever had. I think it's been proclaimed that a couple times. Yeah, we talent all across the board, young guys that you might be able to get on the field that we haven't had in the past death wise. Right. We have a lot of talent that maybe progress throughout the season. So I, you know, it's something to look forward to seeing uh, come this Saturday against Campbell against the Camels. Uh, I'm hoping for a shutout. It's going to be a big one. It's it's going to be a big one. I think this is a a staple uh, game for the Chip Lindsey era at Troy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Labor Day weekend. Uh, hopefully the vet's going to be packed out. I know uh, Brent Jones, athletic director, our new athletic director, has um, made tremendous strides with our stadium, uh, implementing some really good fan experiences. I think it's going to be a tremendous atmosphere this year. Agreed. Uh, him and his staff, Kyle George, have worked. Great, done great things for our program. So I'm really, I'm really excited for Saturdays in the vet. I think, I think uh, we sold 1,500 more season tickets. In the year so, some, like that. yeah, we, we're we're breaking records with that. People are excited about Troy football, and they should be. Oh yeah, but there's a lot to be excited about. Um, uh, I mean, we were kind of down in the dumps about uh, departures. I was down in the dumps doing some of this research. Yeah, because I was like, dang, you know. We, we're, we're, lost this guy. Yeah, lost we this lost guy. this guy. Lost this guy. It's so easy to get caught up in the in the in the names. Like, oh no, we lost Marcus Jones. We're we're horrible now. But honestly, we might be better for it. Mm-hmm. And I, I personally and think we are. Also, the defense was on the field a lot last year because the offense couldn't score. Because our so. offense couldn't, they couldn't move the ball because of injuries, and so it just goes back and forth. And the key to this year: stay injury free. Mm-hmm. Offense. Put up the production. They, they might can. score so quickly, though, the defense is going to be on the field. You know, you know, we might win a bunch of shootouts this year, but I it'll be fun to watch. But who on – we'll get to it. Who on our schedule is going to out, outscore Troy? Yeah. All right, so, you know, let's get into our schedule and predictions. Yes. Yeah, and our it. rankings. All right, let's 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 get into it. Um, I'm a little excited, so I'm just going to go ahead and say Troy's running the table this year. I am hyped up, up on this offense, our offense line, what we all just talked about. I don't see us losing a game due to lack of offensive production. Now, I think our defense, is, and I know our defense is going to be good enough to make those stops that we need uh, for our offense to continue to put up points. So, Troy to me is running to the table. But Yeah, it, it's, it's very possible. Mm-hmm. If you look over the past couple of years, there's just been a few things that's made the difference. Yeah. Those 10 win seasons that could have been great. Absolutely. Caleb Barker, we, you know, we lose game one against Boise. Caleb Barker gets hurt halfway through game four, lose to Liberty the next game. Yeah. I mean, you look at that, we should have beat Clemson three years ago. We had some bad calls go wrong in that game. Yeah. I mean, we've just, we've troyed ourselves. Yeah. To, really to, to lack of a better term. So, if everything goes how it's supposed to, which wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> if everything always went yeah, how it's supposed we'll to, see. Troy can easily run the table here, um, being undefeated, and my hopes and dreams of being in a New Year's Six bowl game would come true. Yeah, that that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, so, so, so let's get into it. We start off this Saturday in the vet. Talked about how great that atmosphere is going to be against Campbell. Next game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, you know, John Scott, I, I probably will, um, will retire from this if, if we lose to Campbell. I don't yeah, think this I is the game that we shouldn't be talking whether or not Troy's going to win. It's trying to tell students to stay in the stadium because it's going to be such a blowout. Absolutely. And don't go home early. Don't, don't go home early. Yeah. Definitely be preaching that this week and at the pep rally. You're welcome. Oh, too. by the <laughs> way, a uh, quick shout out, uh, Troy SGA pep rally this Thursday, going to be in the Veterans Memorial Stadium. Be there or be square. <laughs> square. But anyways, all but confirmed. I would I would say this is confirmed. Like, no, right, yeah. Yeah. One and one to know going into a bye week. If if we lose the Campbell, everything we said in the entire podcast is gonna be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we might as well stop. Might as well just stop. Why yeah, yeah, episode two, you saw it there here. Uh you heard it here first. But anyways, then we go into a bye week, you know. We we, we got ready, we loosened up a little bit, got you know, get a little shimmy shimmy. Then go to bye week, get rested up for a Southern Miss team who a lot of people in Conference USA are hot on. I'm not. Six and five last year, had a good coach hire. Had a good coach hire, very unexperienced. But this coming year, some people are really hot on John Scott. What do you think? You know, you. I convinced you of the Memphis game for week one. I don't know. I, I, I think you've – 
I think you've convinced me. I know Southern Miss is returning a ton of production, so a yeah. lot of people are really high on them yeah. for that reason. And with a good coach. Right. Art Browse is coming to be their offensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were against that hire because of his past, but he knows how to coach he, know, he knows how to He knows how to score. Yeah. Which, you know, if you can score, you got a job in college football. It doesn't matter what else. But it is week two, week three, and he hasn't coached for a long time. It went, so. And it may be probably implementing a little new system, younger guys. They're used to something else. I don't know. Troy, it's a home game. Yep. Exactly. It's a home game, week three of the season, coming off a bye game. We really haven't we, – we've gotten – we've knocked the rust off against Campbell, right? Yep. We, we got the rust knocked off against the Camels, going to a bye week, rest. We're just firing on all cylinders at home. Chip Lindsay isn't going to lose to his old school. No. No, and that's another thing. Um, spoken from our athletic director – Himself has this game circled. It's their Super Bowl. Our athletic director went to Southern. Miss. So, so little Troy backstory here. Southern Miss had a great athletic pro- program. You know, whatever. So go Golden Eagles, whatever they are. Hired. We hired Jeremy McLean, right, to yep. be our athletic director. Jeremy McLean, tremendous. Was here for a couple years. Had a great hires. I'm really excited about Scott Cross, our basketball coach. He hired Chip Lindsey, but that's for another time. Went. Back to Southern Miss to be the athletic director. But while he was at Troy, hired Brent Jones, hired Kyle George, hired some, hired some other great key components from Southern Miss. Yep. So Troy has kind of been like using Southern Miss as a feeder school to our athletic program. So now Brent Jones, our head athletic director from Southern Miss, Chip Lindsey, coached at Southern Miss. Jerry McL- McLean hired both of them, and now is back at Southern Miss. So we've got a nice little rivalry brewing, if no, not I'm just kidding. in the athletic department, just on campus. And they've been a great program. They've been a great program. Uh, I'm appreciative of them because they have brought some fresh and newness to Troy, um, similar campuses. I think when we played them the last time, we were at Fresh and Forum Retreat. This was, was, this was three game. years ago. We were at a retreat at a YMCA camp. And nowhere, Birmingham, Alabama. Final drive. Final drive. We won the game. It, it was honestly, John Scott, I contribute that, watching that with the SGA as where a lot of my passion for Troy football came from. Because we were new Troy fans at that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of freshmen out there, um, you know, it didn't really hear about Troy. John Scott came from an FSU household. I came from an Auburn household, which, yep. oh, goodness, so glad to be out of that area but anyways anyways i think chip Lindsay is too i think chip Lindsay is too <laughs> so uh but but we had to learn how to be troy fans because you don't just get submerged in the cardinal and all of a sudden you're a yeah. troy fan but i contribute watching that game with my fellow trojans in that atmosphere to really just wow mm-hmm. here's to the school we love like sing that fight song but i could go on all day so i i have a win two and oh going into akron what what about you I, because it's a home, I'm going to switch to a win. Okay. I, we're going to win. Now, you know, I'm not sure how pretty it's going to be. That gives you a question marks on, on our defense. They've got a lot of production. But I, I do think – I think we handled this game. I'd be disappointed if we won by less than 10. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's uh, – 2-0. Oh. We're 2-0 oh right now. Going to at Akron. Yep. What, what you got, John Scott? Akron – I mean, we played Akron in the past. I think we played Akron home last year. Yep. And it was a closer game than people expected, but I don't think we're going to have an issue. Yeah. The Sun Belt has shown over and over that Sun Belt is a stronger conference than Mac. Well, um, I mean, just bowl game wins alone. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think Akron's going to be a problem. They're just going to be, uh, I would say, a middle-of-the-road Sun Belt team yeah. that Troy should be doing just fine. With. And, and, you know, we, we were warmed up at that point. It's our first away game. I think it's a great away opener mm-hmm. uh, for our schedule. Not a – not. A traditionally tough opponent, um, easily three and zero going into week four yep. or week five. I'm sorry, week yep. five because we got that by week. So we're three and zero right now. Three and three and zero sounds really good. Sounds good to me. Sounds considering good. how last year started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, anyways. So now we're we're home against Arkansas State, which Arkansas State in the off season had a lot of hype around them. Still do. Still, still do. You know, I um. Everything else aside, it's a really sad situation what's happened with that head coach and his family. Yeah. Um, you know, cancer is such a, it's affected so many people. Um, and that's really a, a, a sad kind of um, – So much bigger than football. Head, it's every, you know, what? It, it, it makes you realize that there is so much more than football. And uh, uh, it's really humbling to see the uh, Sun Belt rally around this Arkansas State head coach who, 
who's made a leave of absence, right? right. Yeah. So you know that's all is all is well in love and war, but this is uh, it's it puts a kind of a damper on that on that season for Arkansas State. Um, it's definitely sad, and best wishes out to that family too as well. We we hope for the best through this time of um, just of loss, and um, we're definitely thinking about y'all. But uh, week four uh, for us, home against Arkansas State. You know, as of right now, they don't they're shaky about who their head coach is going to be. Um, with that leave of absence, what do you think? Well, you, it depends on the team response because sometimes you can see teams that right. play right. harder yeah. for a missing yeah. coach. Um, it is at home. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually the second game. I have four games on Troy's schedule that I think are going to be really crucial. They could go yeah. either way. That first one for me was um, Southern Miss, um, and this is the second one, Arkansas State. It's one of those games that you really don't know. I think Troy wins, again, because it's at home and yeah. also with the coaching situation. Um, I think Troy pulls it out, but I think it'll be a close game. Yeah, I think I think it will too. I, I love that it's at home. Yeah. I, think I, just, I love that it's at home, especially after a, a away game. Um, hopefully, we can use that atmosphere in the bed. Of um, course. We're already three and zero coming in this game, so season ticket sales are up. We've got some excitement. Chip Lindsey's winning. Caleb Barker's healthy. BJ Smith's running down people's throats. Our defense are stopping people. You know, this is woo. It's got a momentum to – I think Arkansas State should be a sellout. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a great game. Right, it's going to be a great game, which then gets us ready for Missouri. That needs to be a sellout of Troy students going to Missouri. <laughs> just, that's a long – Yeah, 14 that, hour year, right? That's a long flight. Goodness. <laughs> Where that. is that, Columbus, Missouri? Somewhere? Yeah, it's, yeah. Pretty, it's far. It's far. I mean, I'm trying to make the trip. Yeah. Maybe, maybe cool. we can get an all-but-confirmed trip. That, that would That'd be, be cool. cool. But – but anyways, at Missouri, Kelly Bryant, as of right now, supposedly their starting quarterback. Yep. Um, they've lost a lot of key players. You know, the past two years, we've had two big games, Nebraska and LSU. I think anyone around Troy knew. And Clemson. It, well, it, well, I was saying the past two years, three yeah, years yeah. Clemson. I, since I wasn't really around Troy before we were playing Clemson early, mm-hmm. early in the season, even though we should have won that, that's beyond the point. I knew we were going to beat LSU two years ago. I even told you that as soon as we found out at the end of next year that we were playing our shows, hey, we're going to win that game. Yeah. I mean, I was completely confident. I, I knew a lot of other people were too. That was not a bad outing by LSU. That was a win for Troy. They that that, that was a legitimate win. Yep. Now, last year against Nebraska, I think you were kidding yourself if you didn't – if Troy wasn't the favorite going into that game. Yeah, the only reason why Troy wasn't the favorite is because of Nebraska's name. It's Nebraska's name, and, and for some reason ESPN loves Scott Frost. Nothing that that dude's ever done. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> great coach. Great coach. Yeah, yeah, okay. Great coach. He's a great coach. He's a great coach. Uh, a lot of people have Nebraska winning the Big Twelve. I mean, Big Ten this year. Okay, well, the first year. Yeah, that's, that's good, good for them. But I was upset that Troy wasn't a favorite in that game. They should have been. Anyways, when, when beat Nebraska and Nebraska – Missouri, definitely not a harder place to play in than Nebraska. Well, Troy, Troy is never going to be the favorites in this game. And that's okay. That's that's what Troy wants. You know, you know. Anytime, anywhere, we're giant killers. Yep. Um, the big thing for this Missouri game is obviously Kelly Bryant. He can mm-hmm. make a big difference. They're losing um, their star quarterback. We're going to know a lot more about Missouri after the first couple of weeks when coming in. And, you know, I think we can revisit this game yeah. after we've, we've evaluated how Missouri's looking. But traditionally, Missouri doesn't have the best defense. Yep. In the past, they've always have an athletic linebacker who who makes some names and good DNs. Good DNs. But their where their weakness typically is is their corners. They get shredded on the outside. Tend to stop the run. Uh, so if we can establish that passing game. Yep. Uh, Missouri, they have a very easy first half of the schedule. Mm-hmm. They're going to be coasting. A lot of people have them ranked solely because they could be five and six at the start because they're just looking yep. right over Troy as well. I think I think they play South Carolina the week after they play Troy. Yeah. Looking towards that game, they need to worry about Troy. Absolutely. Come away with a win. Now I, I have us losing that game, but I was very- winning that game just purely because <laughs> go Trojans. Uh, but I do think we have a really good chance. I, th- I think we have. A, if everything falls into place, if everything falls into place, we should win this game. It's a, I call it a trap game for Missouri. They're untested by this point. They're getting into the monotony. They're going to be ranked. Kelly Bryant's going to be their quarterback. And then Troy is going to go do what Troy does. We're going to punch the big team in the face. We're going to run down their throats. 
Our defense is going to be flying to the ball. We're going to be ball hawking. We're going to be lights out. If we play to our potential, there's no way we don't win this game. So I have us undefeated at this point still, which I already said we were in the whole season. And it brings us to my least favorite, favorite game out of the whole year, just solely because of who this team is. Yeah. Do I even have to say Please don't make me say the name. <laughs> I'll say it. Say it. South. South. Oh, Alabama. Uh, South. Uh, non-biased South, this is a win. Uh, oh, South God. is the Trash. production. Garbage. I think they're. Dude. I think they're returning. They were. <laughs> they were a uh, bad team last year. They're returning like 30, 38, 40 percent of their production. They're going to be the worst team in the Sun Belt. This is this is not a rivalry game that we're, we're biased. They're they're not going to put be this good. in perspective for you. They had a kicker, field goal kicker. He played. He committed there for a good amount of time. Committed to South. He decommitted and committed to Troy, the bitter rival. Crazy. Yeah, that's how bad a state they're in. Yeah, they're. It's oh, new. But, but they're building a new stadium. Oh, condemned stadium. I'm just so happy. I don't have to go to that awful stadium this year. The Lad Pebbles or Peebles, however you say it. In the oh goodness gracious, it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. All right, all right. That's enough. enough talk that. about no, no. So, so now we're at Georgia State. Um, cool game. I would. I think a lot of choice students want to go. This is in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to go. I haven't gone. It's in uh, the Atlanta Braves' old stadium. Turner Field. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Uh, but once again, another choice to win this game. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're beating up. They kind of had a – they had a better-than-expected season last year. Yep. Uh, I think I think we easily take this game. Uh, you know, it's, it's so hard to go in depth for these later games because we have no idea what we're going to look like at this point or what the other team's going to look like. Yep. We're, we're going to have stars that come up. We're going to see how we – all come together and play. You know, you got to count for injuries, which, you know, we've said over and over again, if we stay healthy, which that's for any team. Right. And, you know, it, any play, anytime any Trevor Lawrence goes and breaks his leg, Clemson's a different team. I mean, Clemson's still Clemson. Yeah. But it's still a different team. I mean, you just never know. Jo- for us, we better production, better talent, and a better program altogether. So yeah, altogether. Be- I, and I think we're a better coach. I'm really confident in our coaching staff. I wasn't at first. After doing more research, I – Chip Lindsey's unproven, and he's going to prove himself this yep. year. Uh, which moves us to uh, at Coastal. Another uh, win. And, yeah, baseball school. Um, and really, not even a baseball school late. Um, beautiful stadium, though. They have that weird colored uh, turf. Yep. Um, whatever color. They, it's like teal. The... Definitely. Yeah, definitely definitely a, a baseball school. They're new to college football. Mm-hmm. They're not new to college football in terms of winning, but new to college football in terms of Division One. Right. Um, they're they're growing, they're a great program, but they're not going to be Troy yet. Absolutely. So we're back. Morgan had to leave. He had some things he had to take care of. Um, so we just have the last uh, three games on Troy's schedule that we need to go over. Um, Morgan and I are pretty much in agreement on the schedule. There's a few differences, which I'll explain. Um, but just to wrap it up, we're just going to jump back into it. Um, so Georgia Southern comes after Coastal. Coastal's the last team that we went over. Uh, Georgia Southern is a great team, but we get them at home, as we mentioned earlier, a team that's going to come to Troy and play. So uh, I think it's a game that Troy is going to win. Um, I think it's going to be a close game, but it's another one of those toss-up games that uh, I really think that could go either way. So we'll see. Uh, Georgia Southern's returning a great quarterback. He can run. Um, almost got in trouble for cocaine, but it turned out being bird poop. He might have had a little bit of help getting out of that. He might not have. Um, so that's still unknown what that is, but that's a game that I think Troy should win, but it's also a game that we could very much lose because Georgia Southern is a great, great program. So in the final game, App State, great team, Sun Belt champs last year. Now this game really decides who's going to win the Sun Belt. We've seen it in years past. Last year, App State got the better of Troy at App State, although it was a close game. Um, but this year it comes back to Troy. Troy's got it at home, even though last year Troy played at home. Did not turn out well against Hap State. Um, but this game decides who's going to win the Sun Belt and also who's going to host the Sun Belt. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's on, a, I think, a Saturday when I wish we were earlier in the week because there's a lot of other big games on Saturday as well. Um, but this game really ultimately defines Troy's season. Are we going to be a conference champ team or are we going to be another 9-3 team that couldn't quite get the Sun Belt but still a really good team? So this game is really hard to predict early on because both teams have new coaches. We really don't know. A lot of talent, but a lot of question marks in terms of the coaching. Um, but they'll still be two of the best teams in the Sun Belt. 
But we'll know a lot more about these teams after you know Troy plays at Missouri, um, App State plays South Carolina, and then also through the uh, Sun Belt schedule. But to predict it right now, I'm going to go App State with the win just because I feel like uh, experience-wise and talent with the quarterback returning on the roster, um, this is a game that I would lean App State with the, the talent and production that App State brings back. But this could completely change week one, week two, week three down the road. Um, so that's not a, a cemented pick, but it's a game that I think is really a toss-up and a big, big game for Troy. So looking back over the schedule – Troy is going to be a lot better than what at first we thought. We lost a lot of players. We uh, thought that was going to be a tough kind of rebuilding year for Troy, but it looks really good. I think the worst situation for Troy would be an eight and four season, and eight and four is still a really good season. But it would be an eight and four season if Troy were to lose all those big games. So those games we mentioned: the App State, Georgia Southern, Southern Miss, um, Georgia Southern. Those are all those that kind of like those could go either way games. Troy would have to lose almost every single one of those games to go 8 and 4 or potentially 7 and 5, which I don't think is going to happen. We're going to at least win one of those four and we should win more than one of those four. So I think a, a realistic um, win total for Troy is the same as it's been the last couple of years, 9 and 3, 10 and 2 around that area with the chance of becoming a 10 and 2 school. I mean, I'm sorry, an undefeated team like Morgan wants to say. Um, if Morgan was here, he would say App State's a win, every game's a win. But um, realistically, I think 10-2 and is good, 9-3 and is good. We'll sit somewhere around there, um, and hopefully we can have the chance to win the Sun Belt. So that App State game, I would rather be an 8-4 and four team with a win over App State than a 9-3 and three team with a loss to App State. Um, but, yeah, there's a chance we can go undefeated and a uh, great chance that Troy could be just as good as they've been in the past. But that kind of recaps our – podcast for Troy and this is the first this is the preview of Troy football so each week on Sundays after the game we're going to post our recaps of each game and look ahead to the next opponent um, for Troy so if you're looking for more Troy football um, go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube follow us on Twitter uh, all confirmed and Instagram all but confirmed and thank you so much for watching